So I'm just out taking off feeders as we do, but I just wanted to quickly show you this colony and I'm delighted to see this. So this is the center of the nest and look at that. There's our queen. She's just there, but look, it's broodless. And I'm uh, really, really pleased about this because I had this theory and looking at other beekeepers who are in the know, they indicate this as well. But I've got the feeling that this colony is broodless because we come to the end of that period and we had so much food coming in They've been backfilling with nectar, but also the temperature's been dropping. It's getting cooler. The light levels have been dropping. And now we are left with a Connolly that has no room at all, which is absolutely brilliant. And the queen has stopped lying. And this is the period that they talk about, because when you look at the videos and the evidence, this would fit. Because over the winter, they tend to do a little bit of maintenance laying. And that's when they consume because they have to heat and then they produce humidity. But right now, all the colonies are opening up. I'm not seeing any, I'm not seeing any issues with humidity. Bone dry, look at the edges there. And look at this frame, it's just a block of honey. Look at that. I mean, have you ever seen such well-provisioned colonies? All the colonies have got to do is just, have, oh, we found some brood. Okay, there is a tiny bit there. Well, I'm surprised because I just looked at the other, it's in an odd place. Just that bit there. Is there any eggs and larvae? Not that I can see. Okay, so we know that if we aim for another few, another week maybe, when that's hatched out, we can basically assume that our colonies are broodless. We're taking the opportunity, if it's calm next week, I'll be going around and treating all my colonies if I can. Beautiful colony, full of bees. Absolutely brilliant to go into the winter. There's the original main brood frame there. And that's all that's left and no eggs and larvae in that whatsoever. But look at that honey. Wonderful. Isn't that just peachy? You can see on the top here where I had the feeder and they've even filled it round in that circle. I wish every colony was like this. Sadly, it's not, there's a mix, but you know, pretty good. I transferred a lot of nukes that were in wooden boxes because I ran out of poly boxes into the poly boxes that became free as a few became queenless as I went through them. So basically all my nukes are in poly boxes now, give or take a few but they're all looking pretty good. So that's a good start. So we now know that in about a week, maybe 10 days, we'll have broodless colonies, which is exactly what I thought we would have. And then the queen will just lay a little bit of maintenance throughout the winter. Depending on the temperatures, but that's what we can assume. checking more colonies for broodlessness while I've got the chance and uh, this one was the other half of a cell builder that I finished I gave it a queen and it mated and it's done really well <laughs> it's absolutely monstrous obviously it had a lot of young bees in when I made it later in the year but it was I finished you know when I finished cell building it would have been the second probably the second week of August when I made my last colony but see the amount of bees in the feeder there we just knock these off. When the feeder's empty, it's easy. You don't get them covered in syrup. So you just keep doing that. And eventually you've got to... The thing when you take these round feeders off is you do get them sometimes stuck in the inside. And you'll go to wash your feeders out about a week later and find a load of dead bees in there. And what I tend to do is, because I'm here, I can lose this bit of propolis and rubbish. I scrape it off here now because it's one less job to do when I'm doing it in the sink. And all you've got to do then is give it a rinse and some hot water and all of this just comes off. So that's waiting to be washed and I do wash my feeders every year let's have a little look in here these look really nice bees 
oh, this is just, oh, you know, beautiful. I wish they were all like this. Just get a little bit of smoke. A bit, I'm not surprised they're a bit pissed with me. So I'm just going to have a look, see if I can see any brood or what the state of the brood is. Make some room, because the problem is these frames are so full of honey that we have a real job getting them out. But if you've got a hook like this, it really is great because you can just lift out the frame and with vertically rather than and this is the time of year you really need this because you can hook them out vertically without damage oh there's quite a bit of brood in this one more than i thought there's our queen white dot queen what a beautiful frame there she is running around there so i've seen all i need to see there is a little bit of larvae, so cause, maybe because this queen was made late. Look at that. A very late supersedure cell. I'm very glad I looked in here. Let's take that off. It's still got a larvae in, good. But it just shows you what can happen in a colony. Maybe they think there's something wrong with this queen. I don't know. But maybe that supersedure cell was doomed. I don't know. But I can't see any other cells. Because of that, I'm going to have to lift this other one out and have a look inside. I've often seen supersedure cells that nothing's happened to them. So there's a little back patch on brood on the far side and a little bit of brood there, but generally not much brood. You can see they have no room really. So I'm happy with that. That seems to be the only supersedure cell. So let's get these bees back in with the queen on so I don't lose her. Remember, a colony without a queen this time of year is a doomed colony. Pop this back in. There we go. No harm done. It's important to get your spacing right because the bees have prepared this colony for the winter. And actually, I've made a mistake because I've put that one sign in wrong. And I'm just going to rectify that in front of you because I've made a big boo-boo here. You've got to get those frames exactly right. This one should have been reversed. And when I picked it up and put it back down again, I've got to be ultra careful because I saw the queen on it. No rolling bees. The queen's on the other frame now. I've just seen her. Let's get this back in the right way. When I put that frame down, I spun it around. But they be, the bees have built the configuration for their spacing for the winter. And that's perfect now. You can see between each frame. I'll show you. You can see the gap there. That's how it should be. You shouldn't push your frames back together where one bit of honey touches another. That's completely wrong. And that's not what the bees want for the winter. Obviously, I pissed them off a little bit, which is completely understandable. But the operation is done. The feeder is off. Now I can put my cover back on and they can be left alone now for the winter. Incidentally, a lot of these nukes are going to be moved anyway. That's my eek I have. Brilliant. Good colonies. I mean, absolutely, what I would say, delicious colonies. So good you can eat them. So that's, that showed me that we are nearly broodless. And I honestly thought and anticipated it would be probably the first and second week of December if we were going to get a broodless period. So you can see around here, most of the feeders are off. That one isn't yet, but that colony has done well. I mean, I, I don't mark my colonies well, but I knew that this was a colony that was in a, a bigger hive and it was just requeened. So I gave it, look at those bees, they've eaten all that syrup. So I gave it a really good feed. I gave it a really good feed and they were gathering nectar for at least three weeks, the last three weeks. So they seem to have done really well. They seem to be really nice bees. You can see where the feeder sits, they cement that down, but where it isn't, you've got a bubble and the bees can cluster and I like that. If we could leave that for the winter, it's even better, but. <sighs> Look at the amount of bees in this. Beautiful. 
absolutely packed. I'm not going to look at this, and I'm not. I don't want to lift this up because it's too nice to, to disturb, and it's too tricky with all that wax. So I'm just going to put this on, smoke it down a bit, let get the bees out of the way, and then just close that up. So everything up there is done. All those are done. Just tidying up really the end of the year. Let's get these bees back in this box. I need some new plastic covers, I don't deny. Let's rest that on there for now. Feeder's got to be scraped, but nothing major. It's just nice to feel that we're finally getting finished off and tidied up. That's one of the biggest problems with beekeeping is you really have to make a massive concerted effort at the end of the year. To, even when you think you've tidied everything up, you've got to go and look again. Because you never ever get everything. And you come back and you've got more feeders to move and blah, 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 blah. Incidentally, uh, I've just seen that on the front. I've got to mention that. This is what I did this summer. My colleague cut me up some nice pieces of wood to reduce the entrance down on these nukes. And it seems to have done the trick. It gave the bees the security they need. I don't have mouse guards on these, but you saw the size of the colony and the size of the hole. If they want to get in, they'll get in another way. Like they'll bore a hole through the bottom. If you get something like uh, a pine marten or get badgers or you get all those kind of animals or rats, they can draw in through the bottom and there's nothing you can do about it. But we get very few destroyed. And just that simple thing does help keep the wasps down massively. Because when you've got a small colony, that you made in the summer late and you are trying to get it to make a queen you've got to do, do every single thing you can it's like it's like epic to be honest you've got to feed it you've got to make sure it's got the right amount of frames you've got to make sure it's the right amount of bees that are might might free as good as possible and you've got to get that queen in just at the right time and then you've got to hope she goes off her mates and she misses the showers and misses the birds and then she finds the box when she comes back and then you might have a colony but then they could reject her after all that it's a lot of work, but that's what we do, we're beekeepers. Anyway, I better bash on, I've got loads, I've got uh, three other apries to take feeders off, so I better get my skates on. It was just an update to show you that, but that we're nearly broodless, and I'm pretty happy about that. So it's really exciting to see that, really exciting to know that in literally a week or so, we're going to probably be at our lowest point of the brood, and I'm probably going to start vaping then if I can. Catch you again soon, bye-bye.